everyone. True story. Two young gentlemen with a passion for sports go to their local access TV station some years ago. We're not giving you the air. <laughs> and both of them learn how to interview players, interview coaches, cover game highlights, do all the things that we just sit on the couch and watch and kind of take for granted, but we learned all those lessons. And both of them took their passion in, the, in this new set of skills and were able to, to parlay it into actual work. Now, one of these two went behind the camera because that's where he found his, his, his work. And the other one is my guest here, Mark Ockerbloom. Uh, yes, the two of us came into this together. Yes, the two of us still talk and joke about uh, the good old days. And that's why we're here. And uh, Ock, it's great to see you, pal. Uh, you were nice enough. I want to say this right off the bat. You were nice enough to take me along with you and say, go out and try a story and maybe be part of the show with me because you were the host and I was grateful and still am for the opportunity to be on with you on TV19 and, and uh, have some fun and, and ultimately start on a career path. Well, thank you, Ock. I, I did it because it was so much fun working with you. Uh, the pigs can preview. Not to disappoint anybody, we have no footage of that that will be shown. Uh, I had much less gray hair back then. Uh, <laughs> and so, but it was great fun. And, and that's, that's why I did it. It was easy to work with you. And it's as much fun when I bump into you, uh, see your family now and see, see your career, which is just, you know, it, it's at the top of its game. It's fantastic to see. Well, it's been a lot of fun and it's been a great ride. It's been a lot of people who've helped out. Um, you know, I look back to those days, though, and it was a chance to just go into your local cable access station. I mean, where else are you going to get the chance to go in with no experience mm -hmm. or very little? I had a little college radio in me, and that was about it. Uh, so I went down to the cable access one day, and, you know, the great thing about it was they were there to help. If you were a volunteer from the community, you could step right in and try your luck and see what you could do. If you think back, we had Rich DePiro, who was a part of that, and for your viewers, uh, this always blows me away. He directs. The Price is Right, he did Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Wow. He's done several other shows. He's an Emerson grad who was there for a brief time, but uh, this certainly set his mark in as far as uh, being a very successful director uh, on game shows that people see every day in their homes across America. It's, you need to be, that, that's what makes it a conversation versus yeah. an, an interrogation. <laughs> yeah, but there are some of those, right? <laughs> you your boss, too, and you come back, well, why didn't you ask this question? Well, you know, it's been a transition, obviously, for me to do sports to news, so the interviews become a little bit different in that way, but I can remember when I was covering sports for a number of years that, you know, you would get those setups where you'd be at a podium, you'd have a podium set up, and everybody would get the same sound, but you're right, whenever you could break free and get one-on-one -on -one time or get in a small group with someone else, another player, you may see a big scrum and you've got another cameraman. If you're lucky enough to have a couple crews at the same venue, you can sometimes peel off and get some one-on-ones and get some dynamite stuff. Mm -hmm. When did you first fall in love with the, with the TV medium? I made a transition uh, after freshman year to English. And um, that was where things kind of changed. And then I got into, I went down to the campus radio station, which happened to be in my building, Joseph Hall at Providence in the basement, the radio station there. And I went and, and uh, tried out an audition. I remember my two records I had to mix and talk in between, and they were albums, okay? <laughs> and for our younger audience, ask your parents. I got an internship in Providence my senior year with WJR, the NBC affiliate, with Frank Carpano and Joe Rocco at the time. And that, I got three credits for an English course, and I went awesome. down, and I, I was loving it. And I was around the whole culture of that TV newsroom and so forth, and eventually they let me get on on a Sunday night at 6.30, if I bought a pizza for the crew, they'd stay and I could run on the set and read the sportscaster's scripts that he just had, put on a jacket and tie and, awesome. and make my resume tape. Um, 6.30 p.m. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So hours were getting better already. And uh, so that's why I got into it. And uh, one thing led to another, went to radio and then to television and then uh, over to news back in uh, – Oh, seven now. So it's been 13 years. But the nice thing I have about being at Boston 25 is I've been able to enjoy a lot of the sports success because of my background. And mm -hmm. I came originally as a sportscaster. Uh, so when the Super Bowl happens, I go. You know, when the World Series happens, I go. I was in Vancouver for the Bruins, but nine years ago yesterday. So, you know, it's the best of both worlds. I'm very, very fortunate. You know, it's, it, in this business, you got to be well-read. You got to know a little bit about a lot. 
Uh, how about any other influencers in your life that you looked up to and said, I, I kind of emulate whether you worked with them or met them or never met them? It could be a family member. Well, my father was with the Boston Globe his entire life. So the newspaper, I can still see it on my first, you know, first images of a newspaper in the kitchen table. And I can remember seeing my dad who was on the business side of things, uh, sitting on a Sunday afternoon with a stack of newspapers, the Herald, the Globes, and everything else. And newspapers back then were really Sunday, thick. Like Sunday that. Globe, yeah. That was two hands to carry that baby. But he's looking at it from an <clears throat> advertising standpoint and editorial as well. But he's also looking like who bought this ad and that ad when newspaper ads were huge and, you know, and all that stuff. So I got to know the business side of it from my dad and talked with him about it. Uh, finances and things like that, but also the editorials. He, he has some great stories about just when they had to do, when they were doing an afternoon edition, as you recall, when we were younger, they had two times the paper came out. Imagine that. They had the morning paper <laughs> and they had the evening paper, right? Yeah. And he would talk about significant events, things like the Kennedy assassination or the space shuttle challenger, where people might have left, came back in, got to get that paper up, get it out, and get another edition out. Because we didn't have social media like we do today. It wasn't that instantaneous, but there was a time when there were two newspapers. So that was big. Talk about, I know you're involved with some charities. Yeah. So t tell me about the charities and, and tell me about your involvement in, in them, yeah, well, if you would. Well, first, I lost a brother to cancer in 2004, my brother Carl. Um, <clears throat> so we volunteer at the Pan Mass Challenge. And... Uh, we do it all with my family. We've been doing this for several years. He passed away in 2004, but he loved to run marathons. And it was part of his, he was a six year cancer patient. So it was part of in and out of remission. He would do these. And uh, we thought, how can we honor his memory? And so we, we wanted to get involved with the PMC because of the money they raised for cancer research, obviously, and Dana Farber and, and such. And uh, so we've got family members who ride. We've got family members who volunteer on any one of a number of fronts, whether it's making the sandwiches at the rest stops or it's cleaning up the trash or making the Gatorade or whatever. But mostly what we've done is we are part of the team down at Mass Maritime that when they come for that first night, there's a ship that the riders stay on. Others stay on the ball field and others go into the dorms at the Mass Maritime Academy in Bourne. And so we go down and we get there bright and early Saturday morning at eight o'clock and here come the trailer truck, you know, tractor trailers that come in and we unload all of that with the help of hundreds of other volunteers and we get tons and tons of luggage into their rooms where they're going to stay, whether it's on the ship or in the dorms. We make sure their bags arrive there because, you know, they've got change of clothes and things like that and sleeping bags and such. And we, so we do that every year. Unfortunately, this year it's going to be virtual, but mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's the way, you know, charities have really had a hard time. They've had to evolve as well. Another charity we're very involved with at the station is JDRF, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And we host their gala, we host their walk, and virtual was the way the gala went this year. Uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI, we do their walk as well. And that was virtual this year. But I think they, more than any charity, is the one I think about the most right now in the sense that so many people have needed their resources. And telehealth has been instrumental in that to help people who maybe are hesitant to go to a doctor, mm -hmm. but now they realize, you know, they just need somebody to talk to, a little counseling, a little assist here and there. So, you know, we help out with them as much as we can. I've interviewed several doctors for our newscasts via Zoom, um, just talking about ways people can be helped by their services. So thank you so much, Art, for taking the time out. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to go to a part two, you know, to, uh, when we finally go beyond this, this crazy COVID world and, uh, hopefully get life back to normal. Yeah, let's hope so. And, uh, in the meantime, I hope everyone stays well and, uh, we can really be on the other side of this soon. You too. Uh, you know, it's, you it's uh, great to see you. Great to be with you. Great to relive some of the moments throughout the career. And, um, you know, I appreciate all who watch and I appreciate the opportunity to get to know a lot of people as well through my work and, and as you said. And, and for the record, this is the first time you and I have been side by side on camera since the pigskin preview of Winchester Wuben football. So that's right. Let's not wait that long for the next time. No, no. I really appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, Doc. Take care, pal.